this is the most common safety in pool. Use low right here and split the balls to opposing rails, which is the number one rule in safety play. Execution is easy, the reward is high, even if you wouldn't get the full safety behind the 9 ball. You can also play it without any spin and more cut on the 7. This is a bit more risky though, you need to be way more precise with the contact point on the 7 and over or undercutting will either leave the 7 in front of the pocket or make the cue ball scratch and it's more difficult to end behind the 9 ball. You can also go for the bank shot here, it's of course more risky than the safety but if you make it the reward is very high and it's even a 2 way shot so an offensive and defensive one if you miss it on the pro side because that way the 7 ball will once again end on the short rail. And if the 8 ball is next to the 7, then an even more powerful safety would be to just thin the 7 ball. Just hit it thin enough and you are very likely to leave no shot or a full safety without any risk. And if the 8 ball is blocking, then you're using right spin and play a simple 1 rail kick and stick. You just gotta focus on the right speed because the 7 has a huge zone on the long rail to end on the other short rail. And if you play it well, then the cue ball might even end behind that 8 ball. But what if the balls aren't that close to the short rail? This time, instead of sending the cue ball behind the 9, we're just cutting the 8. Just make sure to hit hard enough on this one. If you overpower it, it's fine. If you underpower, then you will probably sell out. Just as before, we can also use this path 48 ball, but again, in my opinion, it's more difficult to execute and this shot can react completely different on different table conditions. Now, this is gonna be a tricky one, right? Well, if you don't wanna risk anything and still not leave a makeable shot, then just send the 9 ball to the short rail once again. You just gotta hit it with a good speed to not leave anything. And if you really want to put pressure on your opponent, you can also roll behind that side pocket point. This is really powerful, but if I'm further away from the 9 ball, I would never dare to play this shot. It's just way too risky. And as always, you can try to figure out a way to send the object ball and the cue ball to opposing handrails. Here it's very risky because you really gotta nail the path of the 9 ball, speed control is also very crucial and unless you're freezing both balls to the short rails, it doesn't put that much pressure on your opponent. Once again, same concept, different route. We are trying to send the balls to opposing rails. Those two safety shots you just saw are very risky and difficult to execute, but there will be situations in pool where this is the right shot and it just makes the concept of opposing rails very clear. This is gonna be a really really interesting one. First of all you could take the safe route and once again just split the balls to opposing rails. It's easy to execute, there is no risk, but you can leave an easy bank shot here. So to put more pressure on your opponent, you can also try to bring the 9 ball to the short rail again. It's much more difficult to execute and very risky, but it will give you the upper hand in the safety battle because your opponent will now have to split to the long rails and leave you a closer range shot. And if you play the rail first with maximum right spin, we actually have another two-way shot. It's a bit risky, but there are many situations where you can use this kind of shot. Here you also need to be a bit careful because the corner scratch is definitely on. But what happens if you miss it? For your opponent it looks like you got really lucky, but 9 out of 10 times the 9 ball will come back to the short realm and you won't leave your opponent any shot. Shout out to my first coach Carl Langwider for teaching me this shot. And he also taught me this one. It looks so wild, but you're gonna call it into the side pocket. If you make it, then you just pulled off an amazing shot. Oh, baby, I know I get lucky. <laughs> And what happens if you don't make it? It looks like the balls are flying uncontrolled all over the table, but we actually brought the 9 ball to the short rail again. And if you want to learn more about this shot, check the link in the video description. Now once again pause the video and make up your own plan. You already should know it by now, once again we're just splitting the balls, it's easy to execute and you don't have any risk. And if you get the snooker behind the 9, it puts you in a match winning position. You can also try to split this way with an almost full contact and a whole lot of inside spin to hold the cue ball, but this is much more difficult to execute and it doesn't really offer a lot of more value than our previous safety shot. If you still want to split to the short rails, you can also play the kick and stick from behind because it's much easier to execute. Call it into the side pocket and if you miss the pocket, you have a strong safety. The only danger is hitting the point of the side pocket, but the reward is definitely worth the risk. 
Spinning the 8 on the left side is also an option. You have a bit of margin for error regarding your contact point, but if you miss hit it, you will definitely sell out. However, here we hit it nicely and got the full safety. Thinning the ball on the right side is not a real option here. You're sending the 8 ball way too close to the pocket and it's difficult to get behind the 9. This shot would only make sense if the balls are positioned similar to this. You're close to the 8, it will travel to the center of the short rail and the 9 will be a nice blocker. Easy execution, no risk, high reward. This is really an awful position to be in, so make your plan. The split shot is still an option, but with both balls positioned on the center line, it becomes so much harder to execute. And if you slightly miss it, you will sell out and leave a shot for your opponent. That's why you can also slightly cut on the left or on the right and go for the intentional double kiss split shot. Once you understand the shot, it can be a really powerful tool, but once again, it comes with a lot of risk. This is why we also have the full double kiss shot. Just aim straight onto the 9 ball and hit maximum low. The 9 will stay where it is and if the spin is still present on contact, the cue ball will come all the way back and all of a sudden your opponent is in an even tougher spot than you just were. Once again, very interesting situation. You can actually call the cross corner bank shot and if you make it, you will also have a very good chance to have a makeable shot on the 8. This is a bit risky indeed, but the good news is if if you miss it, try to miss it on the pro side again, which is the long rail. That way you will again not leave any direct shot for your opponent, so once again a very nice two-way shot. But what should you do if the 8 ball is in front of the 7 ball? You have two options. The safe way to go is to just slightly graze the 7 ball rail first, that way you will never leave any clear shot for your opponent. However, he will have a clear view on the 7 and still has the upper hand in the safety battle. This is why you can also increase the speed and try to send the 7 ball to the short rail with a chance to get the full snooker behind the 9 ball. Keep in mind, this is more difficult to execute and more risky. And if you want to learn more, get my new training program 30 secret videos and rules volume 2.